and posterior interventricular grooves. And the anterior comes more at an angle like this, right? So if the heart's like that, it comes more at an angle like that. Whereas if I compare it to the posterior, the posterior interventricular groove goes more vertical, straight up and down. So right off the bat, you know, once you get used to looking at that, it's easy to say, oh, now I'm looking at the posterior surface of the heart, and there's the anterior surface of the heart. Okay, so now I'm looking at the anterior surface of the heart. Next is the tip of the heart is known as the apex. So this tip would be the apex. And then this broad all the way across is known as the base, which is kind of weird because usually you think mm -hmm. of the base as the bottom, right? So just that's just the way it is. The base is, you know, think broad, this base broad uh, across the surface. And the apex, apex does mean point, you know, refer to point. So apex, that makes sense, the point, okay? Um, now the other, the other um, thing that we can see on the outside here are the oracles. So this one got cut a little bit, but this is an oracle. Oracle literally means ear, and if it wasn't mangled like this, they kind of look like ears. If you look on the, um, will you take this the front of that off and just hold it up? Doesn't it look like Mickey Mouse ears? <laughs> so these are oracles, okay? Now in these grooves, those are coronary sulci, okay? A sulcus. Look, I'm at a press conference. A a sulcus is it's just a groove. All right, so this would be the right coronary sulcus, the left coronary sulcus. The reason it's called coronary is because your right and left coronary arteries, which supply your myocardium, run in these grooves. Okay. Uh, so oracle. So when you look at the heart here, although although it's cut, and on a sheep heart, it's kind of this grayish color, so this would be an oracle. So if you're looking, right now, you're looking at the anterior, so this would be the left oracle, and then over here would be the right. And again, it's kind of, the heart got a little squished, okay? But again, in the groove would be the coronary sulci, or coronary sulcus. By the way, sulcus, U.S., means is singular, Sulci, if it ends in I, it's plural. So I would say right coronary sulcus or left and right coronary sulci. So that's, I mean, that's where those words come from. Okay. So on the outside, that's pretty much, you know, all, all I would expect you to see on the, on the outside. So then I, oh. Atrium, I'm sorry. The oracle and atrium. Okay. So the, the, the oracle is actually an, an external extension okay. of, of the atria. Okay. And also, atria is plural. Atrium is singular. singular. Right. So I would say, to, just to confuse you more, and it's your fault when everybody gets confused, the, <laughs> the left uh, oracle is an external structure and increases the surface area of the left atrium. So atrium is on the inside. Atrium is a changer, is a chamber. Chamber. Yep. Okay. So, okay. Everybody go with that? Okay. Mm -hmm. So now I open it up. Now, on a test, you know, you might just have one half lay in there, and I might say, okay, well, go ahead and, you know, name that chamber, right? Well, the first thing I do is you figure out, you know, left or right, what is it? So, what, you know, especially at first, what I would tend to do to orient yourself is this is a very big, thick, obvious structure, right? What is the structure? This is the interventricular septum. Now, inter, I-N-T-E-R, means in between. Interventricular, it must separate the ventricles, which means that this space over here must be a ventricle, and then this space over here must be a ventricle. That's the purpose of the interventricular septum. You don't want the blood in these ventricles mixing, all right? Because one side is oxygenated, the other side's not. So you need this vent. So you need this to separate that. Now. So the next thing is, got to figure out, okay, now I know these are the ventricles, but what's the left and the right? Well, if you look, you can see, look how thick this side is compared to this side. And so the left is much thicker, right, which we talked about earlier. So now, this left ventricular wall is much thicker than the right ventricular wall. So I know that all of this is the left ventricle, all of this is the right ventricle. Okay, so now I'm you know, much more oriented to what I'm looking at. Then I see some other obvious structures. I see these chordae tendinae. Now, in a lecture, we'll talk about what they do. Well, structurally, chordae tendinae attach up to the valves 
Now, what's a valve? See that flat, that flat structure? Okay, which valve is that? I know it's the bicuspid because it's on the left side, which I already established before. All right. So the chordae tendine attach up to the valve and then down to papillary muscles. So papillary muscles are little bumps in the ventricle which attach the chordae tendine. Okay, so chordae tendine attach from the valve down to the papillary muscle. Again, in lecture we'll talk about the, you know what how all of that works. So on the right on the right side, I have the same exact thing. It's the same exact thing. So I can see the valve, right? What valve is that? That flat piece. Tricuspid. That's the tricuspid. I see the chordae tendine, and I see papillary muscle. So it's exactly the same on on both sides. Above the valve, I'd find a space. What would be the chamber above this valve? Atrium. Right atrium. And then above, you know, the space up there would be the left atrium. Uh, let's see, what else? So the next thing would be there's three layers. So the outer layer is a very thin layer. It's just a simple squamous epithelium with a little bit of connective tissue. Okay, and it's that layer there, very thin. And that is the epicardium, okay? E-P-I, epi means on or, you know, means on or upon, right? So it's the epicardium. Cardia means heart. So the epicardium literally is the layer on the heart. The myocardium, M-Y-O, myo means muscle. All of this is all myocardium. All the wall, the septum, all of that, that's all myocardium. So you can see the majority, vast majority of the heart is myocardium. Now, the endocardium, E-N-D-O, endo means within. The endocardium lines the chambers, and I, it's shiny, and I can actually go in, just like I did with the epicardium, and I can flick it on somebody. <laughs> <laughs> flick it onto your camera. It would be like 3D. <laughs> <laughs> the endocardium is the same simple squamous epithelium, a little bit of connective tissue, right? and it lines the chambers. Okay, so you have epicardium, myocardium, endocardium. And I think that's all I was on that list. I think so. Right? Okay, so that's what I would, so on a test, you know, for your lab practical, those are the structures on the sheet part that I would, that would, that will have, you know, a pointer and say, you know, name that layer, name that structure, you know, name that chamber, or whatever it might be. Any questions? Can you show me the atrium? Yeah, the, the, the best way to do it is you have to kind of open it up. You have to find the valve. Okay. And then once you find the valve, the space above the valve okay. are the atria, space above, because, you know, that's what the valves do. These, these are called atrioventricular valves. So what do they separate if they're called atrioventricular? Mm -hmm. Atrium and the ventricles. Now, specifically, the right atrioventricular valve is specifically known as the? Tricuspid valve. The left atrioventricular valve is the bicuspid valve. Okay? Okay. All right.